David Elstop and I have just had an experience we will never forget. And if you watch the video to the end, you'll never forget it either. You know, in this business of antiques and art, we're asked to sell sometimes some very strange objects. And this is one of the strangest collections of objects I think I have ever sold. I'm gonna give you a walk around. You're gonna see what's going on. Get ready for a few surprises. It's not a coordinated elephant at this stage. Has the elephant been drinking, George? It's, it's been drinking, uh, it's, it has been drinking. There'll be more of the elephant in a moment, as well as many other very unusual things from this theatre production company, Objects, we'll be selling. I've got your bag of tusks, if you follow me. And when I say objects, I mean a whole warehouse full from PMA Productions, a theatrical production company based in the northwest of England. This is 25 years of theatrical props, some of the biggest shows you've ever dreamt of. The items you need to put on those shows are in this warehouse. We're going to sell them. Here we go. Let's meet the owner and founder of PMA, George Critchley. He's a very, very interesting man. Good morning. Very good to see you. Now, this is a very exciting place. Show us around. Tell us, what are we going to do? Welcome to PMA Warehouse. Welcome to my life for the last 25 years. It's been a brilliant life, a roller coaster of fun, and a theatrical production company that's taken shows all over the UK. And I'd like your help. I would like a hand. Oh, very good. Let's have a look at that. Let's have a feel of that. That's remarkable. I'm going to say that feels very realistic. Not that I've ever held a skeletal hand before. This is part of a skeleton, one of many costumes, one of many props, one of many sets that I have now got for sale. Right. Time, time to sell my stuff with a view of going to a good home, David. And what are you going to do, George? What's, what's the idea for you? I want to continue producing and hire back the stuff from people that buy it from me. Fair enough. OK, talk us around. How many, how many lots do you think we're going to be putting together here? We're looking at, tw we're looking at 12 lots. We have shows for Seven Brides of Seven Brothers. We have Alice in Wonderland, Snow White, Jack and the Beanstalk. And as, as we've just seen, we've got a wonderful Indian elephant from my show Aladdin. Um, I've got a camel from the same show as well. I've got giants for Jack and the Beanstalk. I've got theatre sets from Snow White, Alice in Wonderland, Cinderella, costumes that you can see here for a number of different shows that I think are wonderful sets, wonderful costumes, been professionally made uh, and that I think that people will want to buy job lots. Who's going to buy them? Are we talking about professional theatre production companies or schools, charitable yeah. organisations? Definitely. I think schools, that w I've got items for schools, I've got items for amateur companies, but a lot of the, the items that I've got here today are basically being made professionally. So professional theatre companies, television companies with who, who want backdrops, who want theatre sets, and of course costumes. Let's have a look at some costumes. Show me, show me what we've got over here. Put your hand down. <laughs> Do you take it out everywhere you go, George? Not everywhere, no. <laughs> Give us a hand. Big hand. Seal of approval. <laughs> Here we have, um, we've got costumes for Lady Morticia, the evil stepmother of the so this is Cinderella. Oh, Cinderella. So here we have our Cinderella costumes. Is this the whole set? If somebody bought this, George, could they put on, wow, well, costume, uh, hello. hello. Right, you've worn that before, haven't you? And now I'm Cinderella. So <laughs> if, if the shoe fits, David. Absolutely. If the shoe fits. So I've got all the professional costumes for all the uh, pantomimes. Cinderella here, uh, when, and when she transforms into a ballroom dress, and then she gets on a wonderful carriage. So I have a wonderful steel carriage. Did I see the carriage? You did indeed. Let's go and have a quick look at the carriage. Bear in mind we're on the, on the theme of Cinderella. But before you go, all of those costumes, does that make up one full production of Cinderella? Correct. Yes. Someone bought that, travelling wardrobe. Travelling wardrobe. And they can put on a Cinderella when it comes to costumes. All they need to do, bring a truck. 
Yeah. And then they, if, they, if they're interested in producing Cinderella, they can come along here. They've got a whole uh, raft of costumes. It's all in there. They've got the, the, the theatre sets. I've even got a pumpkin. Oh, wonderful. But I want to see the carriage. Come and have a look at the carriage. I'll follow you. So the fairy godmother, she's waved a magic wand. <laughs> And she's told Cinderella to make sure that she Whoa. gets home by midnight. Whoa! And Tell me about this. How long have you had it for? Where did it come from? Did you have it made yourself? So a, a friend of mine who I was in the Young Farmers with when I was a, a, a wee nipper, a young boy, he's got a, a unit just around the corner and he made it bespoke for me. He, he, builds, steel, he be, builds steel buildings. And I basically did him a drawing and this is the only one that he's ever built. So this is the only one of its style, of its, of its style. type, on the planet. Correct. Wow. Okay, so it's made, it's, a, it's, a, it's metal. It's steel. Steel. He's, he's, he's basically got a steel company and makes steel buildings and now he's maybe a steel carriage. Right. Um, How do you pull the carriage? Basically, you can actually, there is... Um, at the possibility if people want to hire in ponies so some of the bigger theatres can hire in ponies you can actually pull put two ponies on the front of this um, with the t-bar that is provided and you can actually pull the carriage wow alternatively you can have you can have it set on theatre on the stage with Cinderella getting into it um, so if you're creative you can have it there in position already if, and if you are limited for space in the theatre, it does break down into pieces, so you can transport it quite easily in a small van. Do you think a hotel might buy it? I think it'd be perfect for a, a hotel to have in their lobby. Like a wedding thing? So that they can use for a wedding, so that they can have there as a... When, when the married couple have come from the church, they could get into this and is, they could make that magic happen. So for, it would be perfect for a hotel who have weddings going on on a regular basis. But are we going to sell this individually or will this go with the Cinderella lot? This can be sold individually or with the lot. Okay, we'll see what David Elstob thinks. He's the guy that's going to put it together. And talking of David Elstob, should we go and have a quick chat with him? Let's have a chat with David. Uh, what, what have you got stains on your coffee shirt? Stains. That's a really coffee um, stains, yeah. honestly. David, it's a work shirt. I mean, it's to be expected. Coffee, honestly. I might have a shirt if you want. I'm sure there is one on here. There's everything else, John. I've tried every, yeah, I've got it's... a shirt. We could, we could get you, um, you know, take your shirt off. Yeah, be careful of the whale. <laughs> it's extraordinary. Thank, well, thank you. So, Tell me what you're thinking, David. How are we going to work this? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's so much of it, oh, and transport is always that. The transportation would be the difficult thing. So I'm thinking it lends itself towards a timed online auction. Okay. That way we have control over the start time, end time, buyers can. Hang on. I take it, George, you'd be, if people, if somebody contacted us and said, we want to view something here. I would come and we'd, we'd make it an could appointment. Be so Absolutely. buyers could come here, yep. view store collection from here i think it's just everything yeah there's no point in taking this to ripon is there i mean you'll need an rt um so you're going to put it into how many lots david we're going to put it into 10 lots we've got seven brides for seven brothers beauty and the beast which incorporates sleeping beauty dick whittington aladdin cinderella wizard of oz jack and the beanstalk scrooge pinocchio and goldilocks Okay, full sets. Full, huge sets, fabulous. And that, obviously people are going to have to be aware of the fact that they're going to have to make their own arrangements to come and collect this stuff. And they, if they want to come and view it, that's on them. And then they have to arrange to pick it up. Okay. George, are, you going, to, are you going to miss all of this? Of course. The, the problem is I've built it up over the years and it's, you get attached to it. So every piece and every item has got its own individual story and its own individual memory and that's part of the problem with anything when you're collecting things and you have you you, you have a, a garage full of things you can't get rid of it's because you've got oh there's a little memory there 
Um, but you you can't keep everything forever, can you? Nothing, well, nothing is forever. No, no, absolutely not. Okay, so it's going to be a bit of a wrench for you, but I suppose there are some opportunities here for people who are starting out in theatre production. It could be a big organisation that rents these things out. Do, do, do you used to rent sets out? Yes, I have. I've rented, I've hired to uh, amateur uh, venues, to amateur theatres and to professional companies as well. So There's quite a good market for that. There is definitely a good market. So you, you obviously, I obviously need a number of staff to help me with that. And so that people can be shown round taken care of in terms of uh, in, in terms of what fits for their theatre. So it will be a case of some of these sets will fit very perfectly into a medium scale venue or a small scale venue or as I've mentioned before a school or a college production. Uh, there's a small Greece set there for example that we haven't mentioned. A Greece set that was for, from an amateur show um, and um, it, but it can be repurposed. Okay. You can use it for any other show. I've just spotted our friend Nigel here. How are you doing, Nigel? Good morning, all. Good. Now you're gonna. You've got a job on your hands here because uh -huh. you've you've come along to take all the photographs. Uh -huh. Are you gonna have to drag everything out, Nigel? Or what? What are you gonna do? Well, hopefully not. We'll just have the elephant and the camel outside. <laughs> We've seen much that. Much to the amusement of the other uh, park owners and the local residents. Uh, so I'm just looking at a giant. Spider, would this be? Yeah. What is that? This is a whale. Oh, of course a it's a whale. Nigel, there's spider. a difference between a spider and a whale. Okay, I, I was terrible at biology. I can just apologise. But Sorry he's good that. at taking pictures, George, so don't worry about that. There's he's very good at taking, isn't he, David? See, this is a wonderful whale that was used in Pinocchio, which goes with some very nice UV fish that I've got, for example, uh, made by a professional puppeteer. So I've got some really nice UV fish. I've got a fisherman. I've got uh, some fish that move along. I've got a shark. And there are many sharks in business, as we know. <laughs> Especially in the theatre world, I think. And, of, of course, the, again, the, uh, the magic of the whale popping out. You've even got a... What's that, a butcher's bike? A butcher's bike. This would work perfectly in someone's garden. Yeah. Uh, you could put some flowers in here, repurpose it. And have it out. You could even have it on the top of your building. Make a bit of a statement. With well, it. you could, but David, are, are you going to in, sell that individually, or are you going to put that in one of the lots? Does it fit into any of the sets, John? I've used it in Jack and the Beanstalk right. quite a lot. I've had the villain coming on. So, so is that where it'll be, Jack I mean, and the Beanstalk? Well, let's keep it. Let's keep it, in Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we've got. I've got all sorts of little oddities that might be useful, and if you are in, in, if you've got a man cave. You might have uh, interest in repurposing. There's some perfect things here that you could repurpose and create your own man cave with. Be some man cave. <laughs> well, while Nigel does what Nigel does best, have you ever seen anybody wearing an Indian elephant? It's an elephant. Well, of course it's an elephant. It's from a theatrical show but have you ever seen anybody or rather two people getting into one of these elephants and attempting to work it i've never seen him look so good yeah. you make a great back end darling Looking good there, Dave. Thank would you. Would you be kind enough just to walk forward? Just watch your feet. see where I'm walking. Yes. I'm going to guide you.
then if you oh, your oh, do your shoes come off easily? Yeah, if you have a zip for them. You shall go to the ball. So are you left foot or yeah. If you then your right foot then please Hayley. Yeah. So lift it up. your better end? <laughs> better half? Yeah. yeah. It goes inside, Nigel. Inside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Lovely job. And then the... I don't want to look behind you, It's just some... Perfect. Yeah? There we are. Oh, he's better than I could see this. Brilliant. He's very clever, the way he's like... Right, now I've got to try and walk, haven't we? No, no, just stay there. Do you want me nice to do step. some action shots? Some action shots, yeah, please. Hayley, can, can you see out of there? Uh, not really. So, imagine being on a dark stage. I know. Hayley, what's it like being an elephant? Um, I mean, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new experience. <laughs> We've taken the elephants out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> the elephant is now out of the room and outside, enjoying some. Uh, we're gonna, it's going to ruminate in the field over there and eat some grass, go and see its friends, and basically it's making it itself available for some um, Indian weddings. Now, are you going to miss this elephant, George? Do you know what? This is part and parcel of PMA. This is this it actually is attached to my heart. <laughs> this is an elephant that I've, I've treasured, so I'm I'm actually gutted that it has to go. But I, I wanted to go to a good home. It needs to go to an with with it needs it needs friends. It does it needs more friends? Now, what do people get with the elephant? So it's not just the elephant. So it's, it is what is it? One complete set? It's one complete set. I, I mean, the elephant has come from my Aladdin set. So. This has been a really great piece to la resistance as it's walking through the crowds of people. As Aladdin is on top of the elephant, you can get... If oh, you, you get, get someone can sit on it. You can have a very small person right. sitting on the top. I wouldn't recommend someone that is perhaps... You can have a child, perhaps, right. representing Aladdin okay. on the top of the elephant, coming through the audience and giving it that wow factor. Can we have the elephant moving towards us, please, whilst we're talking, just to get a little bit of move. Oh, oh, oh. You can tell they've never done this before. It's not a coordinated elephant at this stage. Has the elephant been drinking, George? It's, it's been drinking, uh, it's, it has been drinking, but only the purest water from the, from the nearest water hole. <laughs> How long have you had the elephant for? I've had it for about, um, ooh, 14 years actually right and I've, honestly i've kept it in very good nick in good condition um and basically it's it's very popular at every venue that it's been to every tell us about it how, about, how was it made was it made specifically for you i asked that uh, i asked for an elephant yeah so i searched the internet in, at the time and said, okay, uh, who can do me that? And I found this wonderful lady in Nottingham and said, listen, I'm, I'm really interested in having an elephant. And she said, I can make you one, brilliant. So I've worked very well with Liz and it's actually, it was at that time, the only elephant in the UK. And she liked it so much that making it for me, she made herself another one. So there, there is a second elephant with slightly different eyes that it does exist in the, in the UK. But this elephant was made specifically for you. Correct. How wonderful. Yeah. It's, I just felt 
I'm all about wanting to give the audiences a wow factor. So what, to, to hear small children giggling, laughing, and um, and completely going wow, and listening to those voices in a theatre when the elephant arrives into the room, you know, it's just it's a very special moment for a producer. Right, let's get David Elstob out of the elephant and down to business. I mean, you have valued some very strange things in your time, David Elstob, and I've been with you on very many of them. But have you ever valued anything like that, fella? No. Oh, how are you doing? <laughs> Tell us about this one, George. So I was in Los Angeles, as you do. Um, I went on a little creative meeting and um, I went along uh, Hollywood Boulevard and there's some wonderful fancy dress uh, shops on Hollywood Boulevard and I, I saw this and I thought I want it. So I... I oh, sorry, why? <laughs> because I was producing Jack and the Beanstalk and I wanted a skeleton. Uh, it's just what I wanted at the time, so I bought it. So I carried this little fellow with me, with my suitcase, with my backpack and skeleton all the way through customs in America with some very frosty faces from the customs <laughs> officers as I said that my, my friend's not been very well whilst <laughs> staying in the United States. Of course, you can't agree an auction, can you, without agreeing some sort of guidelines in figures. Now, David Elsop is going to be running the auction. George is the seller. They've come up with some ideas of figures, I think. Let's go and see what they're going to be. Go on then, boys, what have we come up with? Now, Mr Elstob, how much money are you going to give me? <laughs> I'm slightly concerned because George tells me if we don't agree some sensible prices, I'm going to end up like this fellow. I think you um, might do, yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about money, David. Now, this is the last auctioneer that I used, David. So, um, yeah, unfortunately... I've had He's better looking than me. He's better looking. Yeah. I've had to put him in a cage. He's got his own teeth. So you're going to stay in the cage with him. He's got his own <laughs> teeth. I think looking at you, you look, look like you've got your own teeth. But this this little fellow here is gonna keep, he's gonna keep you warm. Is he? If if you want to stay in this cage, you better give me some decent okay. figures. That's the way it's gonna work okay. here. Tell me, talk to me, okay. David. Okay. Figures. Okay. I'm thinking those small sets. So Scrooge, Pinocchio, Goldilocks, sold without reserve, but we start in prices of two hundred pounds a set. That, that's value for money, there, David. Okay. Are you happy, George? Happy. The, As a, uh, yeah. the other nine sets, the larger sets, um, again, no reserve. We start each of those at £500. I think that's a good starting price, but I think when they, when they see the quality of the sets, the people that are buying the sets will look to the, want to bid more for them. Very good. Can I please get out of the cage now? Should we let them out of the cage? Out of the box. Get in the box. Out of the box. In the box. <laughs> the things we do for money. <laughs> It's all a bit exciting, actually, chaps, this, isn't it? Because we, we, we love what we do, David, because the variety is mad and you couldn't get more, you know, variety than variety shows, George. Now, say that variety one more time because there's a whole variety of things in here, things that people will see and spot at the auction and go, hang on a minute, I could make use of that. And that's the, that's the thing about it. There's so many different things that will appeal to so many different people. You never know what you're looking for in life, and you never know what you're looking for in this warehouse. Keep it exciting. Whatever you're looking for in life, you may well find it. <laughs> got to tell you. But David, <laughs> d d tell us how, exactly then uh, how it's going to work. It's going to be a timed auction. Just Time, explain the timing. Timed line. online auction. So you can log into our website. We hope to have the catalogue online within the week. Um, you can register on there. Um, if things need to be viewed, we can put you in touch with George. Um, there's lots of photographs on there and information as well. All the bidding is done through the website. Don't ring us up for telephone bids or leaving commission bids or turn up for the auction. It's all done online. There's no physical auction here. It's a bit like eBay. There's a start time, there's an end time. Put your maximum bid in. Go for it. He's so terribly modern, isn't he? Hey, isn't that fantastic? How very exciting is that? And you've agreed on figures. We're all yeah, ready to go. Ready to go. Once this video is up on YouTube, you'll be able to start bidding or thereabouts. Thanks for watching. See you then. Bye now. This is a really interesting piece. You can light him, his eyes light up and he's, he's a brilliant little fella. Um, but don't worry, kids, he's not real. Bye!